let us study the parliamentary procedures in our current day topic so proceed the parliamentary procedures the formalities which the legislatures have to observe in the parliament as well as in the state legislatures are generally termed as parliamentary procedures so they are nothing but the formalities which the legislators have to follow or observe that is their business of the day so like when they enter into the house what and all programs are there what they have to take up uh, which issue they have to take up what and all work they have to do there this all come under the formalities which they have to do and to do those to do the work of uh, them they have to follow a certain procedure and all such procedures are together called parliamentary procedures and let us try to understand what is a session so to conduct all this business or the affairs of legislature so they do it in the form of session so a meeting of an official body especially such legislative bodies called parliament to conduct their business is known as a session that means people come together conduct a particular business or conduct a particular procedure for a particular purpose is termed as a session and who will start this sessions every time a parliament session is started with the orders of the president that means the president summons each house so here the word summons means by an order he will initiate the parliament session and each house either it may be lok sabha or rajya sabha it is advised or it is supposed to meet twice a year and with a gap of less than 6 months so but usually the houses of parliament meet three times a year and these three times were categorized as budget session monsoon session and winter session so the budget session usually runs from february to may and in this session the national parliament will introduce the budget and they accept it or they pass it and in the monsoon session and the winter session which runs from july to august and november to december they conduct the other law making process which they were supposed to do so after knowing about the term session so let us understand the other parliamentary procedures so there are different parliamentary procedures as it follows like let us begin with the quorum see quorum is the minimum number of members required to present in order to transact the business of the house that means there should be minimum number of people that must attend the house to start the proceedings of the house see the reason behind this uh, maintaining of quorum or compulsion of quorum is the constitution has a provision in one of its articles saying that one tenth of the total members of the house is referred as quorum that means out of all the members who got elected in house one tenth or 10% of the members are must and should be present to start the business of the house suppose for example if you let us understand let us think that there are 250 members in the house that means 25 members should be present to begin the business of the house so quorum is nothing but the minimum number of members required to be present in order to start the proceedings of the house for example if this quorum is not present in the house on a particular day the speaker or the chairman may adjourn the house or he may suspend the house for not having quorum so he cannot begin the proceedings of the house without having this one tenth members as quorum and let us proceed towards the other parliamentary procedure called question hour see the word itself says that in this hour the members are supposed to ask questions and the government is obliged or the government is supposed to answer or give replies for questions of members and the right of members 
to question the government on matters of public interest is known as interpellation. That means the members who are present in the house has a right called interpellation. That means it is their right to ask questions to the government. Here, government refers to the Council of Ministers and the Prime Minister in the House Lok Sabha. And if it is Lok Sabha, it is Council of Ministers and Prime Minister. And this question hour is usually allotted with the very first hour of the house. That means when the house begins, the very first hour is reserved for asking questions. That is, this house or this question hour generally starts by 11 a.m. and it is helpful for to keep or it is helpful for the members or the house to keep a monitoring on the government and a member of the house may ask questions from the government on matters of public interest and here all questions asked by members must be addressed to the chair or the speaker and once the chair or speaker admits the questions then the government is supposed to answer them or give the replies to the member and to ask this question a member has to give 10 days notice for every question they ask so with a prior procedure with a proper way they have to give the questions before 10 days of the beginning of house and these questions are of different categories so the, the three categories are starred questions unstarred questions and short notice questions what do you mean by starred questions so these are the questions to which a member wishes to have an oral answer that means the member who has asked this question will expect the reply from the minister of government through oral way that means the government has to give reply in oral way such questions are indicated by an asterisk mark like you can consider it as a star mark because they consider it as a very important question the topic on which they are asking question is very very important and when such questions are asked and when replies are coming the members who have asked such questions can even pose supplementary questions and each time when they ask a supplementary question they can even get replies from the ministers so after this starred questions then the other kind of questions are unstarred questions so the unstarred questions will be given reply by the ministers in the form of writing that means written form of answers will be provided to the members who have asked them and supplementary questions are not allowed in or for unstarred questions and coming to the short notice questions so if there are any important issues happening or happened then such questions can be given to the chair and with a period shorter than 10 days when there is an important issue or when there is a issue happening or a burning issue then the members can give questions to the government within a time span of less than 10 days so such questions are called short notice questions and these questions can be answered or may not be answered by government it depends on the minister to which the question is posed so this picture is an example of an unstarred question asked by a member in Rajya Sabha and the minister replying back to him so it is based on some currency notes printing and all when you know new currency was introduced and all such things were asked and the minister gave it in the form of uh, you know written reply so this is one example you know, a live or a example which we can take it from you no know, parliamentary process. soon after the question hour the immediate hour that is followed is called zero hour and this zero hour usually starts at 12 noon as 12 represents the beginning of 
the time it is generally referred as the zero hour and the members during this hour can ask questions in an informal way and till the lunch break this zero hour will proceed that means till one o'clock in the afternoon so in this hour the members can pose questions without any permission or notice to the government so generally the zero hour will go with lot of heated dis discussions and debates so the zero hour the question hour is generally from 11 am to 12 pm and zero hour is generally from 12 pm to 1 pm and after this zero hour there are other ways of procedure through which the members can be relate they can be uh, asked questions to the government or the members can associate with the procedure they are called motions so this is other kind of procedure so what is a motion a motion is a formal proposal made by a member asking or requesting the house to take up some particular matter which is of particular importance that means if there is a very important issue the members can move different kinds of motions and get the information from government among this one such motion is adjournment motion so if a member feels that there is an urgent issue like a railway accident or a terrorist attack or a natural calamity which has occurred in the country then they try to introduce adjournment motion in the house if adjournment motion is accepted by the speaker or the chairperson of the house then the house will keep aside all the business of the day aside and they will take up that urgent matter for discussion and debate and one such other motion is no confidence motion generally this motion is introduced by the opposition members on to the government so a no confidence motion is generally the expression of lack of confidence in the government or the ministry for the opposition so opposition generally uses it as a very good tool to expose the ineffectiveness of the government and to introduce such no confidence motion it must be supported by 50 members of the house and once this motion is accepted by speaker it will be taken up for discussion within 10 days and after the motion is after the no confidence motion is finished with the discussion then the house will go for voting and in this voting if the motion is passed the government has to resign and the government will be dissolved so generally this no confidence motion will be used for exposing the ineffectiveness of the government and there is other thing called confidence motion which is used by government to display its confidence in as a government to run the country other proceedings of the house so let us discuss about the adjournment so adjournment motion is different and adjournment is different so adjournment of the house means the suspension of sitting of the house by the speaker so due to various reasons the speaker may suspend the session of the or the sitting of the house say so sitting of the house means each day so each day the house meets and it does its job so that each day uh, uh, working of the house is called as sitting of the house and the speaker may adjourn the house for Suspe or the how the speaker may suspend the house due to various reasons like suppose if the whole day business is finished then the speaker may adjourn the house for the next day or suppose if when the house meets and it came to its notice that some some sitting member of the house or an ex member of the house dead then the house is the house will be adjourned by speaker for that particular day and during the discussions and debates if there is out of order i mean if there is out of order or disorder the speaker will adjourn the house and when there is no quorum the speaker also adjourns the house that means he will suspend that particular days meeting of the house and whenever the speaker finds it necessary he may use this adjournment and suspend the proceedings of the house for that particular day or sitting and there is the other thing called prorogation or prorogue prorogation means termination of the session by president as we have discussed earlier 
there are three sessions of parliament during a year like budget session monsoon session and winter session so the beginning of the day and ending of the day all together is called a session i mean like the whole session of budget can be come to an end and that can be done only by the president suppose if budget session is started and the budget is introduced and it is passed at the end the budget sessions will be finishing and that finishing part will be done by president so speaker will not prorogue speaker can adjourn prorogation is done by president this is a picture which is generally you know just to make you understand how this no confidence mot motion will operate in the house like you can see the display board with the number of votes supporting the motion like uh, yes like 126 votes are there supporting the motion and those are against the motion no like 325 so here the display board says that the no confidence motion is not passed in the house and these are the below members the prime ministers of recent times they faced all this no confidence motion and atal bihari vajpayee in 2003 he lost the government with just one vote okay during the voting so he was not having one vote majority and because of one vote he lost the majority in house or he la he lost the confidence of the house and he has resigned from his office and the government collapsed and went for fresh election after finishing all the proceedings of the parliament so let us begin with the speaker of lok sabha so speaker of lok sabha is the presiding officer that means if it is lok sabha he is called speaker and if it is rajya sabha he is referred as chairman so let us stick with our topic speaker of lok sabha so he is the presiding officer of lok sabha that means he controls monitors and regulate all the affairs of the lok sabha and he conducts the business of the house that means he is the main person who is responsible for conducting the affairs of the house and as a chair person or as a speaker he occupies a great authority and responsibility here the words authority means his decision is final in the house and responsibility is that it is his duty to see that the house runs with proper procedures and in a order so the speaker has both authority as well as responsibility and the speaker decision is not answerable on the speaker is generally not answerable to anybody and his decision is final so except to the house he is not answerable to even any court of law so he is uh, in charge of the house and his decisions cannot be questioned even by the courts or uh, the rulings given by speaker cannot be even challenged in any court and the election of the speaker the speaker of lok sabha is elected by from among its own members that means the members who got elected to the house will elect the speaker and the speaker himself or herself will be members of that house so soon after a new government is elected and a new house begins all the members will vote and they elect their speaker generally the speaker comes from the ruling party and the term of the speaker generally the speaker has a term of 5 years and till the new speaker comes or a new lok sabha gets elected he will continue in this chair as a speaker and to remove a speaker we the house can simply pass a resolution and remove him and sometimes the speaker can resign by addressing a letter to the deputy speaker and who is this deputy speaker so sometimes when the speaker is not in the house to conduct the affair to conduct the affairs of the house so the deputy speaker post is created and he functions similarly with uh, how a speaker will function and the deputy speaker will can also be removed as the speaker can be removed the procedure of removal is same that is a simple resolution can be passed in the house and they can be removed 
the role and functions of the speaker of the house so the functions of speaker are categorized in different ways so among that the first is the business of the house like what is the role of speaker during the house meets and what are the functions that he will exercise so let us see that see among that the speaker presides over the meetings of the house that means it is the speaker who allots time for all the members to speak or question the government or the government gets replies all this is needed a particular time so a speaker gives time or allots time he is called the presiding officer of the house and all the speeches and remarks made by members in the house must be addressed to speaker it is not the members talk one to one with each other they should first make all the speeches and remarks addressing the speaker and so that the house may run smoothly if a person if members talk to each other with one to one then this house may lead to disorder hence all speeches and remarks are made in the house are addressed to the speaker and the speaker interprets the rules of procedure of the house and the decision made by him is final that means regarding any rules or regarding any decisions to be taken on issues in the house it is the speaker's decision and his decision is final and all the bills introduced in the house are passed by him or signed by him and it will be sent to rajya sabha as well as the president so that the bills get its final nod and they become laws and the speaker also decides the admissibility of all the questions resolutions and motions that means if any member has to ask any question or pass any resolutions or introduce adjournment motion kind of things so the speaker will decide whether to admit such things or not in the house and after all uh, the house uh, discussions and debates are finished it is the speaker who will put all the issues to voting and announces the results and during the discussion during the voting process if there is a deadlock between the members then the speaker will cast his vote and he will un- i mean he will unlock the you know deadlock and he decides the speaker himself will decide whether the bill introduced in the house is money bill or not so let us study this money bill and ordinary bills in later part of the class that means any bill which is allowed with expenditure of money such bills are called money bills and so that decision is given by the speaker so the speaker of lok sabha also have certain administrative functions like he receives all the petitions like various committees in lok sabha will request the speaker for various needs so he will receive all such petitions and requests and also he will also receives various documents in the house and it becomes his administrative function and he also communicates the decisions of the house to the concerned authorities so what suppose he receives request for some questions and other things so he will convey all these things to the concerned ministries in the government and he will get the things done he also regulates the admission of visitors or press persons to the house so you may be aware that in lok sabha there will be a visitors gallery where the the common people can go sit and watch the proceedings and to admit such people it is compulsory to take the permission from the speaker and press persons who generally record the proceedings of the house are also even to they have to take the permission from the speaker and these three comes under his administrative functions coming to the disciplinary functions the speaker maintains order in the house that means when there is a disorder or when there is noise from members he is a, he is a, you know involved and then he will try to bring the discipline in the house so to bring such discipline in the house he may suspend a member when there is a grave disorder that means when there is a serious disorder and imbalance in the house the speaker can even adjourn the house you know temporarily and he may ask the house to meet again and he can even suspend member if he is found 
causing lot of disorder in the house the speaker also removes certain indecent and unparliamentary words used by members unknowingly or in a hasty manner so whenever such words abusive words unparliamentary words are used by members during heated discussions and debates the speaker may order the technical authorities who are recording the proceedings to remove such words and also the speaker decides the issue of breach of privilege that means if any member try to obstruct the duties of other people in the house then the speaker you know he will consider it as a breach of privilege that means a person trying to obstruct the other person's business and he may take action on him and contempt of court house that means if somebody outside people or any person try to comment on the decisions taken by the house then it comes under the contempt of house and the speaker can direct the authorities to punish such people and the speaker also decides whether a member stands disqualified under anti defection law or not this i think we have discussed earlier where if a party member shifts his loyalty and that party if he complies to the speaker then he may order for disqualification using anti defection law in continuation with the role and functions of lok sabha speaker so speaker also acts as an ex officio chairman of some committees of house such as business advisory committee and rules committee that means he also acts as an ex officio chairman that means by default due to his you know highest authority in house he will act as chairman to some of the committees in the house business advisory committee that means these committee includes members from all political parties including the ruling and opposition and to begin before the begin beginning of the session of any you uh, know be, beginning of the session of the house the speaker will host a business advisory committee and he will try to announce the business of the house and he will take opinions and all other things from the members of the house and they will plan that particular session and he also acts as a chairman for rules committee that means the rules are to be followed in the house and if there are any changes to be brought in the rules and regulations all such things will be monitored by committees and he will be chair the chairperson for such committees and he also appoints chairman of all committees of the house so there are various purposes which you know the members are supposed to do in the house and to, for that members or for he will be dis- taking on them to different committees and he appoints even chairman to such committees and also he issues directions to the chairman regarding their work suppose if a committee is formed to bring some changes in the rules then he will issue directions to such uh, you know committees which were formed or framed by the house and there are some other works also taken up by the speaker that means the speaker presides over the joint session generally over the ordinary bills the lok sabha and rajya sabha if there is a deadlock between both houses then the president will summon a joint session of the house during such joint session over ordinary bills the speaker of lok sabha will preside over the joint session where both members of lok sabha and rajya sabha will be sitting together and also he nominates persons for parliamentary delegation to various countries by consulting chairman of rajya sabha so to know about the best practices of parliamentary democracy or parliamentary procedures there were sometimes the speaker may nominate some members from you know uh, parliament by consulting rajya sabha chairman to send them to such countries and learn this the best parliamentary practices and the he will take up the nomination of such persons and he also presides over the conference of presiding officers of legislative bodies of india that means each state will have its legislative body called state assembly and its officer heading that assembly called maybe speaker again and all such conf- speakers will be called for a meeting and he will be presiding the speaker of lok sabha will preside over such meetings of presiding officers of legislative bodies in india